Hi, welcome to Kaiju Masterclass. I am Matt Parmley, co-organizer of Kaiju Masterclass and co-host of the Kaiju Transmissions podcast. Today we are joined by Tom Kitagawa, known for his many roles in Super Sentai, Megaloman, King Ghidorah and Mothra 3, and of course, playing Godzilla himself in many of the Millennium films. Tom, thank you so much for joining us today in Kaiju Masterclass. We are so privileged to have you. Uh, joining me today to help with the interview is my co-host Kyle Bird. Say hi, Kyle. Hi, everybody. And doing interpreting for us this evening is Amanda Wayne. All right, Kyle, why don't you take the first question? All right. Um, so uh, once again, thank you very much for joining us. Um, so we're going to start our interview with uh, just the very beginning of your career um, with you joining the Japan Action Club in 1975. Uh, what was it that made you decide that was a career path um, that you wanted to follow, and uh, what made you interested in joining Japan Action Club? はい、Mr. Kitagawa, um, he was interested in superheroes since he was a child. Um, and then when he was in high school, he was in the gymnastics club. Um, but he uh, heard from his you know, teachers and coach and everything that you really can't make that great of a living just doing gymnastics. You can't make a lot of money doing that. Um, and they told him that becoming a stuntman was was an option that he had, and that's how he became interested in that. So uh, we just lost Sonny Chiba this year. What was your relationship with him like over the years, and do you have any memories that you would be wanting to share with us? そう、ま、番組以外にそんなにお会いすることはなかったんですけど。で、ま、一番新しい最近あったのが去年、2019年の7月の後半にあの、モースカロライナのローリーで一緒にイベントにやったんですよ。その時にいろいろまた最近の彼の目標お話をいろいろ聞いていたんでそれをま達成できずになくなってしまったのかなっていうところがちょっと悲しいところですね残念ですいや you know, he works with him as you know as a stuntman for 40 years or more probably um and he didn't see him a lot kind of outside of working on shows together um, but recently, Kyonen de Staka? Ano, Sen, Sen, Nisan, Ju, 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 Hi. Um, so two years ago in 2019, in July over the summer, uh, there was an event that he attended together with um, Bin Faria and Sunny Chiba. So it was the three of them together. Um, and he mentioned that he spoke to Sunny Chiba a bit about. Um, you know, some of the goals he wanted to achieve, and he thinks it's, you know, a shame that he wasn't able to achieve those in the end. You also served as an understudy to Kenji Oba. Um, can you tell us what your working relationship with him was like? Kenji Oba is probably his favorite senpai. 
um, that he's had. Um, they were very close. He saw him a lot in, you know, various circumstances, even outside of work. And he's come to his home uh, and he really feels that he's taught him a lot. Were there any uh, specific uh, um, experiences on set that he had with Kenji Oba that he would be willing to share? So, Kenji san, で、いびの形一つ例えばこうやってるのをこうやった今こうなってるのも違うこうはこうだ細かく全てをあの言われましたね形体の形にしても角度がこうここじゃないといけないとかこうやないといけないとかすごく正確に Kenji Oba was a really detailed, meticulous, detailed oriented person. Um, he was always giving him, you know, really detailed, helpful instruction about exactly how to hold his hands, you know, like just even the slightest difference. Um, don't do this, do that. And he really felt like he was a person, he was the person to emulate. <laughs> っていうのがケンジさんの動きと、もう一人ハルタさんっていう先輩が2人いて、この2人の代わりをやったことによって自分の動きができたんで、で、ケンジさんはまあロボット使うコンピューターのような人、行った通りのとこできる。で、もう一
、ジャングルっていう名前にも変わったし、うんまあ、で最,後最終的には、まあ、千葉さんと別れて、ジャパンアクションエンタープライズに変わったんですけど、はいまあ、自分はやっぱり今でもジャパンアクションクラブっていう名前も好きだから、い、ま、ま、あ、だにジャックの人間だとは自分で言ってますけど千葉さんがまあまあ関係的にはそんなに千葉さんと関係がそんなに大きく変わったわけではないけど仕事周りがかなり変わってきたのでその時に辞めてしまった人間もいますよね。The, the work situation changed quite a bit at that time. Um, for a while, there was even talk about changing the name to Jungle.、Um, but that eventually,、um, after separating from, from Sunny Chiba, it was renamed to Japan Action Enterprises.、Um, but Kitagawa san personally, he really likes the name Japan Action Club. So he still likes to say, I'm a JAC person.、Um, but yeah, it was. It was、uh, It, it definitely caused a lot of changes, and there were people that quit, like in kind of response to that、mm. at the time. So,、um, well, what, were the, what was the first、uh, film or TV production、uh, that you worked on? Were, were you doing stunts before you started doing you know, the tokusatsu、um, uh, suit acting? Akumaiza 3, isn't it? Okay. アクマイザー3の兵隊でキリキリって言いながら、主役の人にかかっていく役でした。はい。Um, so he said that his first,、uh, his first stunt work was on アクマイザー3, which was a tokusatsu job.、Um, how exactly did you get chosen,、uh, or how, you, how were you offered、um, to join the, that production, アクマイザー3? あそれはまあその1年その撮影に行く1年とか前からあのうちの練習があって練習をまあ毎晩練習があったんですけどその練習で先輩が認めてくれてそれは明日から仕事に行きなさいって言われてそういうふうにしていくんですよね大体あのその練習はあのジャパンアクションクラブの練習そう体育館で。When he was part of Japan Action Club, every night they had practice and he worked really hard and his、uh, senpai recognized how hard he was working and they kind of like helped him get that role. So I know that in Megaloman,、uh, Megaloman you had、uh, played several giant monsters.、Um, how was different? How was it different playing those characters, those monsters, from the characters that you actually played on other Toei shows? My question is that Megaloman is a lot of people who are in the world. The world is a lot of people who are in the world. The world is a lot of people who are in the world. The world is a lot of people who are in the world. The world is a lot of people who are in the world. The world is a lot of people who are in the world. Um, so he said actually、um, on Megaloman, he only played the kaiju Kamagi, which shows up、wow. kind of at the、yeah. very beginning.、Um, but I guess Megaloman's not available in the US, right? No, Or, no. No, Megaloman wa bekoku de mienai jotai. No, no, de nanka. Jisai ni mite nai desu. Kyomi ga arin deske do, jisai ni mite nai. Ma, すごいですよ。金髪の長い。髪の毛で真っ赤な体をしたヒーローですね。ウルトラマンの真っ赤な感じ。髪の毛がいっぱいあって。<笑> so he's saying like how cool like the costumes. こう歌舞伎の獅子ってわかります？歌舞伎の獅子。なんていうのかな。歌舞伎であるんですけど、こう長い。ライアンの似てる。まあ、髪の毛いや人間が髪の毛が長くてここを持って髪の毛でこうやって演じる歌舞伎があるんですけどそれを多分題材にして作ってあるんです。So he was describing the character from Megaloman saying that it's、uh, if you've ever seen the kabuki characters that have got like the really long shaggy hair 
Um, yeah. It's kind of like looks like that. And it's like, looks like kind of like Ultraman if he was super hairy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> あの、小さい視覚たちが5人ぐらいいるわけで、それにこう悪い悪者たちが入ってって地面まあ戦うんですよね。そういうところで露見にはよく行ってましたけど、特撮はまた別のところで特撮だけやってるんで、だから特撮
。で、まあ、番組的にはやっぱりダイナマハイト、ダイレンジャーがやっぱり一番思い出は強いかもしれないですね。Um, so he really likes all of the Super Sentai series, to be honest.、Um, uh, if he tries to think about which one he remembers the best, he, he does have a lot of memories of being on Change Man, where he was Ch- Change Pegasus.、Um, and then, kind of like as a show in general, he likes Dynaman. Which one's Kina Bangami wa Dynaman de? Ah, Dai Ranger. Oh, Dai Ranger, Dai Ranger. He likes Die Ranger the best. Ah, the best show. Well, actually, Bio Man was the first one, Battle Weaver, and Mr. America was the first one to get the character. In the next one, he was the first one to get the character. In the next one, he was the first one to get the character. In the next one, he was the first one to get the character. In the next one, he was the first one to get the character. In the next one, he was the first one to get the c h a r だからそのブルースリーっていうのは結構飛んで飛んでることが多かったと思うんですけど、次でシューン、シューンとか。<笑>で、あんまりアクションを地面でこういうのができなかったんで、次の年のチェンジマンの時に思いっきり爆発してたくさんアクションをしたから、結構思い出が強いんですよね。So he actually, he likes Bio Man a lot too.、Um, he was explaining kind of Which show was connected to Bio Man?、Um, but he played Blue Three、um, on Bio Man, and unfortunately, he injured his leg、um, during that time. So you'll notice if you watch that show, there's a lot of him just like flying around, like, <laughs> <laughs> like special effects because you know he hurt his leg and they were trying to keep him off of it.、Um, <laughs> and so, because of that, you know, when he did Change, Change Man, which was after that, he was like, you know. Doing the absolute best he could to do all the action and explosions and everything because he's just getting off of recovering from his injury. So he's got a lot of memories of that. Okay, wow.、Um, so、uh, I'm going to talk about、uh, Mothra 3,、um, where you had played King Ghidra.、Uh, how did you、uh, get that part? And what was your reaction when you were offered to play you know, this classic Toho monster? I think it's a good thing to say. 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 I think it's a はい。あ、ブルースリーの。そうです。あのハウスワンフーメンっていう知ってますか。あ、あ少しあのけ研究研究しましたあ。ありがとうございます。<笑>それでそのなんて言ったんですか。キングギドラを作るモンスターズの若狭さんご存知ですよね。はい、あ、はい。それで自分のことを覚えてて。でモスラ3の監督の鈴木さんが若狭さんに相談したら北側がいいんじゃないかっていうふうに言ってくれてである日突然自分の携帯電話に電話がかかってきて「キングギドラやってくれませんか?」って電話がかかってきてます。<笑>嬉しかったですかいやびっくりしました。<笑>まあ、でもまあキングギドラは怪獣の王様ですよね。で自分も子供の時から怪獣博士になりたいぐらい怪獣好きだったんでまあ一生に一回の思い出に怪獣が王様だからやってもいいかなと思っていいですよって受けたんです。わかりました。Uh, so he started off by saying this is kind of a long story、uh, but essentially what it is is when he was 20 he was in this TV commercial where he played Bruce Lee I don't know if you can hunt this down on the internet somewhere.、Uh, but、okay. I guess it was very memorable. And Wakasa san, who did the monster design,、um, saw him in this commercial and remembered him and was like, hey, he looks like he's super fit and limber and would be a great pick for King Ghidra. So he talked to Suzuki san, the director, and they were like, great, well, let's get this guy then. So they called him up on the phone. They're like, hey, you want to be King Ghidra? And he was super surprised.、Um, 
but you know, ever since he was a kid, he's considered King Ghidorah to be, you know, the king of monsters, which I mean, I guess we've sort of taken that title for Godzilla in the West, but <laughs> uh, king of kaiju. Um, so he's like, well, you know, I got to do it, right? You know, got to do my best. I've never heard that story before. <laughs> um, that's pretty awesome. Uh, so I got to ask, uh, just was it a difficult adjustment to go from playing these very quick moving, um, you know, uh, superhero characters to being in this gigantic, bulky uh, three-headed monster suit um, that needs all these, all the, all these extra wire works and and things like that. What was it? Was it hard to uh, kind of adjust to um, such a different part? Yeah, it was ある程度動けますから。入って very different um, when you play what he, what he was saying, uh, a kaijin, you know, when you're playing a person, mm -hmm. um, you can move around, you can see what you're doing. Um, although, of course, if you're, if you're too, like, short of stature, they kind of don't let you be the hero most of the time. You end up being <laughs> kind of like all these other roles. So he's saying, you know, he did this for, like, almost 40 years, and he only got to be with the hero a couple of times. Um, but, yeah, for... King Ghidorah, you kind of, you know, you get strapped in there and then you have to kind of negotiate with all these other people who were involved about how are you going to keep your balance and how are you going to move this huge thing? So it's a very different experience. How was that suit operated? Where did you actually have to place your arms because you don't have any place to, to stick them out the suit? King Ghidorah, there were people who sometimes had like their hands up in like the three heads to kind of move them around, but he was kind of just like in the chest and had to kind of like struggle around a bit, essentially. Sounds very uncomfortable. <laughs> He's really dark and, you know, kind of cramped and not great. I'm wondering how he took direction. Like, I mean, he can't see very well and he's kind of wobbling around. How would they set up the scenes and tell him what to do? <laughs> こう、なんですか <笑> He was pointing out kind of on Godzilla, if you can imagine that as King, King Ghidorah, um, his head was kind of like approximately where the arms are. Um, so he could hear people if they kind of like shouted directly into the chest, you know, if they talk loudly enough, he can hear them. And there were also <laughs> levers that were up above, kind of like in the chest area, and he could move the levers around. And yeah. 
、まあ、火薬つけててもそんなに怖くなかったしこう遠,く遠くにあるからこう爆発してても全然怖くなくてバンバンバンバン。<笑> So it,、uh, it helps, you know, when there's all kinds of explosions and stuff. You felt very secure in there. So that was one advantage. Now, you were also in the suit for the, the younger prehistoric Ghidra.、Uh, that's smaller and it seemed to, to be、uh, quicker. Was that suit a lot easier to operate? You know, how would you compare、um, the, those two suits? <laughs> <laughs> もちろん、まあ、軽いっちゃ、まあ、軽いっつっても自分では支えていないんで,でグランドギドラっていうのはもう本当に200キロぐらい持ったのかなすごく重いんですで昔から立ってるだけらしいんですまあつってこうつってあるんですけど何もできない状態ですねでこう首3人首羽が1人2人で体だけ人間で、あの尻尾が2本。で、あと、ウィンチでこう、吸ってあるんで、はい、もうほとんどそのまんま立ってるだけで、こういうふうに動いてる、ゆっくり動いてるだけだったんですけど、はい。で、ヤングギドラって白亜紀ギドラの方は、やっぱり監督の最初の命令が、あの、走って飛べって言われたんで、はい。これで走って飛ぶってどうやってやるんだろうなっていう感じでスタッフの人と話をしてでそ,のその当時あのナンバーナインのセットの真ん中に天井にあのずっとレールがついてるゴンドラがついてるカメラがずっと乗って撮れるようにそのスタジオの真ん中のレールにウィンチがついててそこにこうギドラからこう撮ってるわけですよね。で、そのウィンチ時代のあれをこう動かすのに10人ぐらい人がいるんです。<笑>ガーッと引っ張るのに50メートルぐらいありますから<笑>で。で、ウィンチを上げれば体は浮くわけですよ。で、ウィンチを操作する人と引っ張る人と首を動かす人が3人ずつ。で、あの、羽を動かす人が2人。で、足は自分がやってますから、全部で20人近くの人間で、とにかく走っていって、ブワーッと上がりますからって、こう、ウィンチで上げてもらったりとか、そういうのを話し合って、挑戦したらうまくいっちゃったんですね。Yeah, it was definitely much easier to use the small suit,、uh, the Cretaceous period young g i d r a because it was much lighter,、um, and that the, the grand king g i d r a the big one, Pretty much, you know, you just get in there and you stand there and you can hardly move because it's like 200 kilograms, so it's just absolutely enormous.、Um, whereas, in contrast, the young g i d r a、um, the first thing the director told him he wanted him to do was to run really quickly and to fly in the suit.、Um, so they had, had to have all these negotiations well, how are we going to get the suit to fly? So,、uh, eventually, they set up the inside of the studio. So, they had all these wires and winches set up.、Um, and they had about 10 people to crank the pull, pull on the winches up, and that would lift him up, and then he could fly that way.、Um, but overall, there were like 20 people helping him move because、mm. there w a s like 10 people lifting him up so that he could fly. Um, there's two people in the wings and like three people in the necks. And he did move the feet himself, but it was still a big operation to get that kind of action.、Uh, overall, I guess just um, uh, playing uh, Ghidorah, what, what, is there anything that、uh, you feel like?、Um, You were able to bring to the role and kind of make it your own? So, this is it. Ma, so, no, how about Ki Gidora, young Gidora, or yet, the King Gidora to you, Mono, or Hajime, the book, Uki Maru, the Kaizu, and Yapta, or Yapari, the Pobreshi, or the Stone, eh? Hi, Tala, Yapari, Kofrimuk, no more, Atama, the Koka, the Kaoga, Ko, Uku. それから体をこう向ける、こう、向ける、そのタイミングとか
とにかくあの釣って生きてるように見えないように生きてるキングビューラーにしたかったんでその辺の操作はやっぱり一生懸命になりましたね。Um, so he was explaining about the young Ghidorah in particular.、Um, he was very pleased that he was able to、um, make it so mobile, essentially,、um, because that was like the first time that that had really been done.、Um, and something that he worked incredibly hard on getting right was the timing for moving the heads and then moving the body along with it.、Um, so it you know, really looked like a living thing. Um, because that was difficult to get right, so he worked really hard on that. So now we come to Godzilla. When you got the call from Toho, do you know what made them think that you should be their version of Godzilla for the next movie? Well, I know some of the three in the Kanto Guru, no, Suzuki Sanga, Sigin of Hosea, Millennium, no Kanto Guru, and they, well, what a son of the その時も電話が直接かかってきて、<笑>えっと、貴様ちゃんまたやってくれるって言うから、あ、いいですよ、なんでしょうかって言ったら、ゴジラなんだけどって言われて、え、それはちょっと話が違うじゃないかって、一瞬悩んでしまいましたよね。あ<笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑>、um, so... のきっかけです。<笑>はい。So the director、uh, for Mothra 3, Suzuki san, was the same person that directed that first Millennium Godzilla film. Um, mm. So they'd already worked together. So he got yet another phone call, and Suzuki was like, Hey, you want to you wanna do, do a new project for me? And he's like, Sure, sure, what is it?、And、he's like, It's Godzilla.、Um, and he was, he was pretty shocked. But、uh, since they had worked together, he thought of him, and you know, they worked well together.、So. Oh. Um, <clears throat> so Godzilla was born、uh, as a symbol of nuclear war. But the meaning of Godzilla has changed through the decades. What does Godzilla represent to you, and how does that、uh, impact your performance within the suit? So, this is the first time I saw Godzilla. I saw Godzilla in the past, and I saw Godzilla in the past. I saw Godzilla in the past, and I saw Godzilla in the past. I saw Godzilla in the past. Obviously, the, they were the, the first two suit actors for Godzilla were Nakajima and Satsuma san, and、mm. he, he thought from the beginning that he wanted to try to do it differently than them.、Um. こう目が動いて頭が動いて体がこう動きますよね、はい、そういう表現がすごくしたかったんで、はい、若狭さんにモンスターズの若狭さんに頭がこのこの頭がこう動く,動くようにしてくださいって頼んだんですよ、はい、自分の頭を動かしたらガッとこう動くようにって頼んで作ってもらったんですけどそれがまあなかなか難しいことだなっていうのが。5年間やってよく分かりましたけど、まあ、それを表現するのにかなりかかりましたね。One thing in particular about how he performed Godzilla,、um, he explained this a little bit previously with、um, his comments about King Ghidorah and what he thought he brought to that role.、Um, but like when you see animals in the wild, you frequently see like their head moves first and then their body moves, and it just it looks really natural. And he felt really strongly that he wanted to capture that. Um, in his portrayal of Godzilla as well.、Um, and he went so far as to ask Okasa san, who was designing the, the monster suits, to make it so that the head would move、um, on the Godzilla suit so that he could do that. And that ended up being a rather difficult thing to do. And I think it, it took, he said, like five years or something to get it the way he wanted it. But、um, that was something that he felt strongly about. So, man, Godzilla was. やっぱり自分から自分がやってたゴジラは大体自分からこう行って破壊するとかっていうことはなかったのでやっぱり攻撃されるから攻撃するとかこう受け身のゴジラだったのでそれは全てやっぱり人類の方がやっぱり勝手にゴジラにちょっかいを出してるっていうイメージでやっていましたね。Um, he views Godzilla as Um, something that 
you know, he attacks because he is attacked um, and that it, his actions are kind of just responses, natural responses to things that humankind does. And that's kind of how he pictures him. You know, he, he plays the role of him, but that's, that's about it, I guess. When you were first cast as, uh, you know, the new Godzilla actor, um, did you have any ideas of how you wanted to play the character in your head before you started shooting? Did you kind of have that, any of that worked out before um, you actually got in the suit? なんか今さんとさつまさんとはこう別のものをやりたいと。で、デザインもやっぱり一心されたんで何とかしないといけないと思ってましたね。でも初めてスーツを着た時にこれはできないと思いました。そうですか。そうですか。<笑> Um, so like he mentioned before, um, he, he felt very strongly that he wanted to do something different than the previous suit actors, Nakajima and um, Satsuma-san. Satsuma, yeah. uh, he wanted to play Godzilla different from them. Like he, he thought that they needed to do like the suit differently as well, like the appearance. Um, but the first time he got in the suit, he was like, oh no, I'm not going to be able to do this. And thought he, like, he felt like he was going to die getting in the suit for the first time. まあ、あの、キングギドラっていうのは、こういつもこう常にこう、ワイヤーで連れて、連れていたので、そんなに重さっていうのは書かってこなかったんですけど、初めてゴジラっていうものを着た時に、この重さと呼吸のできなさと、
uh, Kiryu and like Monster X who were uh, realized through Supermation. How did you approach fighting the flying monsters differently than the monsters that were realized through another suit? So, ま、um, so he was explaining kind of overall that he really thinks that his work on Sentai prepared him to do this kind of work because um, on things like um, Gose, he was able to like move really quickly between different opponents um, mm. and like be really responsive to to them and uh, specifically about monster x um there is a scene which he was kind of just describing which i'm probably gonna mangle but like there's a scene where like you were listening right <laughs> yeah <laughs> we can help you <laughs> uh there's a scene where like godzilla is standing here and i guess it's monster x there mm-hmm Tate on the camera got punched and the camera like pans and then Godzilla is like goes like that and he was like explaining that he was imitating Common Rider during that scene and that was just <laughs> so you may have to watch that again. Well, you should meet the good side. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like they're standing and then the camera is panning around them and you see the hand go like that. Mm. That's so, common rider. That was common rider. <laughs> nice. Uh, <laughs> So the the most difficult part of that film is he has to pick up Kumonga and swing him around, uh, and yeah. that was a challenge. When, when starting one of these battle sequences, how is it decided? You know, where to position the monsters on the set, um, and just in terms of uh, you know of where things are positioned. Uh, on a miniature set, you know, is there a movie that was the most challenging um, or a scene that was the most challenging um, related to that? だから<笑> testing out a battle sequence you start out with nothing on the set except for just the two monsters um, and you just kind of figure out how you guys are going to move um, and then once you figure that out then they start adding in all the miniature set pieces um, so you kind of just have to stand around and wait for several hours while they do that and then when you get started again you pretty much just have to you know not smash anything you're not supposed to um, so just kind of be careful of the set and um, it's not actually that complicated i guess um, when working with other suit actors, uh, how much rehearsal, you know, ahead of, ahead of filming, um, did you, do you get to do with, with the other suit actors? Mm -hmm. 
大体やる人間って慣れてるんでこういうふうにするって言ったらもう別に一生懸命練習しなくてもそれはできるから。そんな時間はかかりません。They really don't do a very long rehearsal.、Um, generally, people that get the role of suit actor,、um, they're pretty experienced. So, you know, if you make a movement like this, they generally know kind of how, how they want to respond to it.、Um, so, they'll do a little bit, but they really don't, don't rehearse for a long period of time. Okay. Okay. Well, Ultraman とか Um, you know, if you're thinking about like a superhero like Ultraman or something, he's jumping around, doing flips, doing cartwheels, like that.、Mm -hmm. Responding to that kind of choreography can be really difficult.、Um, but if it's just a kaiju on kaiju battle, you know, you're both pretty weighed down. So pretty much all you can do is just like stand there, punch each other, switch positions, punch each other. And really, it's hard to make it that complicated. Um, but you do have to be kind of careful about what's going on around you, and you don't want to you know, injure anyone by right, moving, right, right. moving in a not good way. In Godzilla x Megaguirus,、uh, there's actually a scene where an airplane comes in and crashes into Godzilla and it explodes and it catches the suit on fire. Can you tell us what happened in that scene? <笑>すごい外が騒がしいなと思ったらまあそのカットが終わって自分が出,出てくるのにやっぱり15分ぐらいかかるんでその時にそれを聞いてびっくりしたぐらいででも全然自分にはあの影響もなく気が付くこともなくで周りのスタッフの人を信じてるんで絶対に危険なことはないってこっちも思ってるからまあ中としてはそんな感じですね。For him, honestly, it didn't really make much of an impact. And honestly, like the whole being on fire thing, like he didn't even really notice until it was over. Like he's inside the suit, so he can't really like see what's going on out there. And he, you know, he trusts the, the people he works with, so he wasn't too concerned. And, you know, it takes him a little while to get out of the suit and see what's going on, anyways. So it really didn't have too much of an effect on him. That's good to know the suit is, is safe in that way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I know that you said that the suit used in Godzilla Final Wars、uh, was your favorite to work in because it was so easy to move the suit.、Um, how was the suit making process different for you compared to the previous suits that you were in? <laughs> はい、自分の頭、ここにあるんですね、この中ぐらい、首の根元に。で、手を、もうこの状態の時に、ほとんどこのぐらいなんですよ、ね。はい。だから、この手より頭はもっと前なんですよね、ずっと。だから、怪獣を殴るってことは絶対できないんです。先に顔が当たっちゃって。はい、そういうスーツだと絶対にファイナルウォーズのアクションはできないっていうのをあの監督に見てもらって、はい、北村監督にちゃんとあのメカゴジラの時のスーツでこうや,やってみせてこれじゃできませんっていうふうにして座ることもできなかったからそれでもう完全に作り変えてもらってだからファイナルウォーズのスーツっていうのはほとんど自分この体に。肉をつけてるだけっていう感じの
、ゴジラだったんで、やっぱり動きやすかった。関節の位置が、肩は肩、肘は肘。はい、前のゴジラは、肩は肘。ゴ<笑>ジ<笑>ラの肘が自分の肩ぐらいだったんで、もう絶対にもう可動域が違ったんで、まあで、手を伸ばせば後ろの皮膚はぎゅっとこう出るように、そういうふうにも作ってあったんですけど、わからないけど、足とかも全部そういうふうに動いても伸び,伸びたり入ったりするようにしてあって、で、頭も結構軽く作ってくれて、で、それまではメカを入れて動かしてたんですけど、もう軽いのが一番だしことでもう、ヘルメットにそのままガバッとぶつけて、ブンブンブンブンと動くようにしてくれてて、それが逆に、で、安全面としては、今までのゴジラってのは火薬いくらつけてもやっぱり痛みもないし、そういう安全性を考えて厚くしていたものを薄くしてるから、やっぱりそこが心配だと言われたんですけど、まあ、そんなに、この辺はちょっとやこう火薬で破れて、怪我したりしたことはあるんですけど、そんなに大して、まあ、叩かれたぐらいの痛みですね。それまでは全然感覚がただパンパンパンパンって言ってるだけだったけど、ちょっとこう、ショックがあるぐらいの違い。So he was explaining that Wakasa san, who did the suit design、uh, while he was, he was playing Godzilla, was a really nice guy. And every time he made a new suit, he would always listen to what Kitagawa's feedback was.、Um, and he would make it more comfortable for him with each iteration.、Um, but, like in the typical Godzilla suit design, as he was pointing out on his Godzilla figure,、um, his head was kind of where Godzilla's chest is. And then.、Mm-hmm. There's like a mechanical part on top that he can sort of use to control the head.、Um, and then for his arms,、um, essentially his shoulder ends up being Godzilla's elbow. So he's kind of got like this stubby little, like he doesn't have a full range of motion for his arms. So he was demonstrating to Wakasa san,、um, like for fighting Mecha Gojira, that he really couldn't. Hit him very well, and he just wasn't getting the kind of range of motion that he wanted. So, Wakasa san was nice enough to essentially redesign the entire suit concept for Final Wars.、Mm-hmm. Um, and it turned out being like it's it's almost like they just like took muscles and like slapped them onto Kitagawa rather than him being in a suit, sort of.、Um, so, it was like the first time where it's like He doesn't have anything mechanical on his head that he's using to control Godzilla's head. It's just like a helmet, basically. So he can kind of just like move it with his head. And then his arms actually correspond with Godzilla's arms, which gives him、um, that mobility that really allows him to, to do those cool fight scenes in Final Wars.、Um, and he did mention that、um, they were a little bit concerned about safety、um, and whether it would be easier to get injured in that kind of suit.、Mm. Um, but he didn't really feel like it was too bad when he was actually using it. Like, you can, you know, when in the older suits where you're kind of just like in the middle there, you don't really feel anything at all.、Um, yeah. But in the lighter suit, I mean, you do kind of feel when you get hit, but, you know, he does martial arts and everything. So he didn't really think it was much worse than just doing that.、Um, so it was, it was a good suit in the end that he liked it. Okay.、Um... Well, with the Final Wars,、uh, Godzilla being more、uh, mobile, more uh, uh, you know, quicker,、uh, we'd mentioned、um, earlier you know, that、uh, um, you had more say in the, in the fight scenes and the movements and how、uh, things were choreographed.、Um, I guess just speak a little bit more about how the choreography on that film. Was different, and maybe、um, if there are, are any ideas that you contributed that、um, were some of your favorites. The Final Wars of the film, the film of 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 the film 怪獣をまたいで、上から顔を殴るなんて言うとは
絶対信じられないことだったからそれに向かってまあいろいろと考えたりはしましたけど、ね、あとはやっぱり軽い、まあ、軽いって言っても戦隊の怪人に比べたら何倍もあるぐらいの大きさですけど<笑>まあこのミレニアムゴジラがまあ例えば何ていうかわかんないですけどここの背びれだけでもこの長さが2メーター近くあるんですよ。はい。で、ここに体が一番前に入ってるから、自分のお腹からここまで2メーター以上あるんですよね。大体それで想像できますか、大きさって。<笑>それに比べてやっぱりファイナルウォーズはあの、あれ背びれどこにあるんですかって聞いたぐらいだから<笑>、小さくて<笑>。まあ、やることはやっぱりすごくこういろいろこうもう想像がついたんでこれはこういうことができるこういうことはできるっていうのは全てアクションはもう自分ができるから書いて作っていったからまあ失敗はなかったんですよねでもやっぱり一番最初に言ったように顔が最初に動いて体が向くっていうのをやっぱり一番表現したかったところを最後のファイナルウォーズでゴジラが海に向かって帰っていくときに振り向いていくんですけどそこのカットはすごくそこを表現するためにまず肩をこの可動域を大きく見せるためにわざと肩を先に回して頭を残しておいてこういうふうに折り抜いてからまた肩を動かしていったんですけどそういう苦労をしたっていうところもちょっと最後のところを見てみてあの欲しいですね。You know, even though you say he is, you know, the suit in Final Wars was lighter and more mobile, it's still, you know, much heavier, obviously, than what he was working with when he was doing Sentai shows.、Mm-hmm. Um, but also、yeah. that this was kind of the first time it was possible to punch Kaiju in the face. <laughs> um, so he spent a lot of time thinking about how to best take advantage of that. And really, his perspective was that, you know, anything that I'm capable of doing in this suit, I want to try to do it.、Um, and then he was talking about、um, the very last scene in Final Wars where Godzilla is walking off into the ocean.、Um, and he was remarking、mm-hmm. again about kind of the, the movement of the head and then the body and kind of getting like head and shoulder and body movement and that. Um, he felt that that was he, was, he was pretty pleased with how he was able to do that and felt like it was, it was natural, natural movement. Okay, yeah, it's a, it's a good performance. It's my favorite of your Godzilla performances. It's a good performance. It's a good performance. It's a good performance. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, So,、uh, kind of talking about some of the more modern Godzilla stuff,、um, have you, I see your poster in the background.、Um, have you had a, a chance to watch all of the、um, American legendary Godzilla films? And just kind of what, what are your general thoughts on, on those? American Godzilla is very good. I think it's a good thing. 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 スーツだけだと表現しきれないところがあるんでそこでできないところをあの CG を使ったりしてプラスしていけばもっといい動きができると思うんですよ。もちろん人によってはスーツでやることがいいんだっていうおっしゃる方いっぱいいますけど自分としてはそれを混ぜて作った方がいいんではないかなっていう、まあ、簡単なことを言えば目,目をまばたきするにしてもまあまばたきするかどうかはわかりませんけど<笑>、それをだからごあの CG で動かすとか、口の動き方もちょっと、たまに CG でぐらっとこう動かすとか、そういうのもいいと思うんですよね。だからアメリカのゴジラっていうのは、まあフル CG なのかもしれないですけど、やっぱりすごくいいと思いますよね。で、あの、モーションキャプチャーも自分はよくやってたんで、そこが分かってる人がやれば、すごくいい絵ができると思うんですよ。Um, so he said, of course, I've seen them, all three of them.、Um, he really likes them.、Um, and he was talking about how he thinks that 
kind of using a combination of CGI and suitmation would be like the ideal for him. But of course, mm-hmm. as a suit actor, you know, he does, he, he wants them to keep using suits, um, but he doesn't think yeah. that there's anything wrong with kind of supplementing that with CG action. Uh, like, for example, you know, you can make Godzilla's eyes um, blink and stuff with CGI, and that's not something you can easily do with the suit. Um, and that he thinks, like, the legendary films were full CG, I guess. Is that correct? Yeah. Yep. Um, yep. But, but he thought that they were good and he enjoyed them. Um, and he mentions also that he thinks that if you do motion capture, you know, with people who have experience in summation, that kind of thing, that you can get a really good end product, too. Does he have a favorite of the three that uh, Legendary had done? Uh, he likes the second one the best. Okay. I'd like to know um, uh, uh, Kitagawa's uh, impressions of um, the Legendary Godzilla and Shin Godzilla and uh, their movements since they were both done with motion capture and, and CGI. So <laughs> this あれスーツでもいいよねっていう気がするんですけど。うん。あれだったらできますよね。うん。なんかまあもちろん作品としてはすごくいいんでしょうけど、自分もあんまり好きではないからまあゴジラ怪獣映画が好きな自分としてはや
Awesome. Um, I also have a, a question that's not on the list, Amanda. Um, mm -hmm. This should be pretty straightforward. Sure. So he worked uh, at both Toho, you know, uh, Megaloman, Godzilla, Mothra, um, and did all the Sentai shows through Toei. Were there any major differences between working for both studios? ま、はい。で、まあ、映画とテレビだとスタッフの方たちの人数が違いますよね。その はい。東方に来て The most important difference is really just the size of the studios. Because um, you're talking like a completely different scale for doing movies versus doing TV. Um, so, you know, doing movies and stuff at Toho for for one cut of whatever you're working on, there may be like a hundred staff people involved. Whereas for like an episode of Super Sentai, there's maybe like 30 people or something. Um, and if you're doing a show like Super Sentai, um, you're, you're shooting a scene, you kind of just, you know, you get through it, you do whatever, and it's probably fine. Um, and it's not a big deal. But, um, you know, like doing a scene of Godzilla in a movie at Toho, if you mess it up, and you have to do it again, there's like all these man hours of work that you've just caused and like all of this money that is now being lost in theory. So it's kind of a very different way of thinking. Um, and it sounds kind of stressful, honestly. Mm -hmm. Um, how has suit acting and being a stuntman evolved over the years? さ、昔から今に比べてですか。そうですね。あ、そうですね。昔は体を使ってスタントとかアクションをやってたけど、今はやっぱり はい。すごくやってて悲しいですね。で、なんかスタントマンってもういらないじゃないかなっていうような気もしてきましたよね。ただスーパー戦隊とかのやっぱり自分たちの後輩たちはそれを一生懸命ついで自分たちはすごいことをやってるんだって頑張ってるからそこのところ
does he feel like that's mostly kind of gone outside of you know the the TV stuff like Ultraman? He and his his colleagues are doing their absolute best to prevent suit suit acting from turning into all CG, mm. um, and that he thinks that there are things that you can express as a suit actor that you can't get with CGI, and that right. wants yeah. to hang on to that. CG を作ってるスタッフの人の技術が上がればいいわけですよ。でも今のやっぱり yeah, CGI is getting really good, and obviously, like as the technology improves, it just gets better and better. But he doesn't think that it's quite at the level where it can do everything that a person can do, and like yeah. who knows what the future holds. But um, well, after many years away from doing, you know, the the Tokusatsu hero shows, um, later on, you 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 came back uh, for some uh, some projects like. Uh, the Grand Caesar series and Toei's uh, Tokuger, Tokuger um, films. Uh, what was it like stepping back into those kinds of roles after doing so much uh, um, kaiju suit acting? Yeah, <laughs> Great, um, so he's really kind of like doing both all along, I guess. So mm. um, it really wasn't it wasn't a big adjustment, or like he was doing the same kind of work anyways. So it was it was more just like, hey, I'm much lighter than I normally am. This is great. <laughs> um, speaking of motion capture, uh, um, you have done motion capture for. Um, a lot of video games, you know, like the Dynasty Warriors series. How how did those jobs um, first come to you? And uh, you know, do you do you um, enjoy that as much as the suit acting? まあ、ま、最初にどうやって来たかっていうところで話すと、えっと、その最初に始まった頃、ま、ゲームセンターでやる、あの、格闘ゲームから入ったんですけど、えっと、自分に多く仕事が回ってくることが多かったっていう理由はその剣士っていう八極拳って分かりますかね八極拳中国拳法の八極拳ああ分かりました兄名で漫画であったんですけどそれがすごい人気が出ててそういうゲームを作ったりする
um, and kind of just more work came from there. さっきも言いましたけど、体が小さいからなかなか主役ができなかったっていうのを逆に逆伝とって昔のモーションキャプチャーってすごく早いのすごく狭くてで小さい人の方が使い勝手が良かったんですね。今はもう体育館ぐら
、はい、でそういういつもビールばっかり飲んでるなんか酔っ払ってるけど強いっていうような感じの人だったんでまあそのスーさんにもそのイメージをちょっとそんな感じでいいんじゃないのっていう感じで言われてたんでまあすごい楽しくやらせてもらいましたね。ただまあ今月もまた出番があるので。行くたびにやっぱりみんなと会えて楽しいですよ。そ um, so he was saying, you know, of course he's worked on Sentai series for a really long time. So he, he does kind of know a lot of people that are involved.、Um, so、um, someone that he knew,、um, they, they made this role kind of for him and offered it to him.、Mm. Um, and he modeled it off of Tsu-san in the Cutie Honey. Mm. Um, who is kind of like the, the guy who's really strong at the Kempo martial arts, but he's like always drinking and always drunk. And he's like, well, why don't I do a character like that?、Um, and yeah, he's had a really good time doing it. It's been a lot of fun. And it's great to get to kind of see everybody and, and work together.、So. Um, speaking of Toei, just a kind of personal curiosity.、Uh, I saw he had a credit on their Spider Man series. I was wondering if he recalls、uh, what characters he, he played in that. Spider Man no, hey, Tai, this one, worry, it's by the way, chit, 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 <laughs> um, so,、um, he mostly played like the, the evil henchman guys.、Mm. Uh, he played like a bunch of different kind of extra roles, but he didn't get to be Spider Man. That was one of his. So, it's more like that. She got to a mina, some hair tie, the eat the stuff, Spider Man, beer, to car, you don't know, to go to the game, like rope, or to get there. みんなとかって引っ張ってるわけですよ。ビルの屋上から。<笑>で、横移動したり。<笑>そういうことをして、スパイダーマンを助けてましたね。<笑> So, there's like a lot of scenes where like Spider Man's like using his web and like climbing up a wall or something, and he gets to be the, the dude that's like climbing up the rope. Like, <laughs> that's, that's his role.、Uh, going back to Legendary、uh, Godzilla for just a second,、um, if he were to coach、um, Legendary's Godzilla in battle, what advice would he give him?、Uh, yeah, advice is <laughs> Uh, he feels like he should be getting advice instead. Legendary, the second. Ah, this is my next. No, to give me, go to the car, and I'm going to have to give me, go to the car, and I'm going to have to give me, go to the car, and I'm going to have to give me, go to the car, and I'm going to have to give me, go to the car, and I'm going to have to give me, go to the car. あの発想がね、やっぱりすごい大事だなと思ったんだけど、こう、大きく吸って、バーッと吐くの。やっぱり自分のゴジラとのをこうやってて、バーンとこう早くやってたんで、あれを見た瞬間に、ちくしょうと思いました。<笑>悔しくて。<笑> So, in the, the legendary movie from two years ago, there's a scene where like, Godzilla is breathing his atomic breath, and he was like, really emotionally moved by like, How, like, what a long breath he took, and just like how great that was. And he felt like, man, I really can't compare to that, can I? Because, you know, when you play Godzilla in a suit, it's all very quick and you can't do that kind of drawn out breath. So he's just like, man, <laughs> <laughs> they've won. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tom, thank you,、uh, Mr. Kitagawa. <laughs> thank you for.、Um... <laughs> Being so generous with your time and, and answering all of our questions today has been an honor to have you on Kaiju Masterclass. And、uh, from all of us, just thank you very much. And、uh, that's a wrap, everybody. Yeah, tell him thank you very much. It's, it's been an honor.、Um, and,、uh, you know, he's like one of my childhood heroes. So it's, it's been a dream come true for me. Kanari Nagaku Narimashita no de, ano, kore de o waru to o moemase, ano, 本当にあのたくさん時間を割いていただいてあの誠にありがとうございます。本当にあの光栄に思います。あの子供の
頃のヒーローにインタビューするのは有名なことなので、あのすごく感動しました。<笑>ありがとうございました。いやこちらこそありがとうございました。本当にあの楽しいひとときでした。あ、よかったです。Thank you. えっとなんなんつうんだっけ。Thank you. Welcome. <笑><笑> Yeah, he says thank you to you guys as well. It was really fun talking to you guys. Thank you. All right, well, <laughs> sign off. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you.